Welcome back to Ferocious Education, as I said. Today, I'm going to be talking about IDNomics going with the ticker IDX. Now, for this one here, I hope I'm going to be giving you a good update towards the latest news for this one, addition towards technical analysis a little bit towards the end. Now, I did cover this one multiple times before, so my last video will be in the description below. But without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So. Ideonomics. So just in quickly kind of a short summary, this one has two kind of solutions and it's a holdings company for those two solutions. It has e-mobility and fintech solutions. There is different companies that they do have underneath, whether it's mobile mobility or capital, e-mobility or fintech, etc. And we can talk about it a little bit further. But first off, I do want to take a quick look into their first quarter results 2021 just in case you haven't seen this one and the importance of this one i'll highlight in a bit so revenue for the quarter was 32.7 million dollars which represents the fifth consecutive quarter of growth demonstrating the increasing strength of ideonomics's businesses timios and other titles and escrow businesses generated revenues of 27.6 million and wave revenues of 1.8 million, reported the charging batteries in line in revenues table. Both of these businesses were acquired in the first quarter and consequently their financial results are only included from the date of the acquisition. Revenues from electrical vehicles were $3.0 million dollars up from $55,000 in the first quarter of 2020. Now the gross profit of the first quarter 2021 was $10.8 million, which represented the gross margin of 33.1%. The gross profit in the first quarter of 2020 was $44,000. Now the selected business updates and highlights. They acquired wireless charging provider Wave, acquired her title and escrow services company Timios, announced sponsorship in, NAC in ACFE and membership in CalStart, C-A-L-S-D-A-R-T, Timios expanded retail purchasing business, Solid Track expands tractor reservation campaign, invested in the Italian motorcycle company Energica, Timius generated record high revenues for the quarter and bolstered cash position to $356 million as of March 31st, 2021. Now, moving on from there, what we get to see here is institutional buyers are a bit bullish and bearish onto this one. Some bigger names have been adding. For instance, Citadel Advisor added last week around 315,000 shares, which comes up to be around $920,000 in total. Now, there are some companies that have been liquidating, for instance, Virtual Capital, Paloma Partners Management, but others have been adding. So it's kind of a two way street. Goldman Sachs on the 17th increased their position by 612%. So it's really how you look at it now in terms of the financials itself you're getting to see that their cash and cash equivalent currently is 359 million dollars compared to december 31st 2020 where it was only 165 million dollars now the total current assets you're looking at is very much closer to the 400 million dollar mark compared to the 180 million dollars off last quarter now the total assets in general you're looking at $570 million compared to $234 million. Now, the total current liability or the total liability, $140 million versus $32.6 million. And if we were to go ahead and take a quick look from revenue, from March 31st, 2020, you're looking at $44,000 compared to $10.8 million. That's a massive push, but again, Look at the revenues here. You're recording $4.5 million compared to $3 million, or sorry, $3,000. And revenue from sales and services, $28.16 million compared to $375,000. Now, in terms of the net loss, instead of recording in millions, like $12.6 million last year, they only recorded $737,000 this quarter. Now, the net loss attributed to the common stockholders, shareholders, you're looking at 12.3 million compared to 5 points, oh, sorry, 573,000 
So you're covering in almost 24 times better than what you had before. Now, the next thing I do want to cover here is also their EPS is around zero, which is a good thing because this is a sign that it actually might go towards the positive side and kind of give you the best or the first EPS positive statement in a while, which is very bullish. Now, they do talk again about the U.S. hybrid acquisitions and how much it's got, it costed them, etc., uh, relating to a five-year contracts, etc. The details here aren't important. This is from the 14th of May. If you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure to drop that like button down below, right over here, and then don't forget to click subscribe and turn notifications on on the bottom right side. So without further ado, let's move on towards technical analysis. Now, on the technical analysis ten point of view, what you're seeing here is that the 10 SMA is finally crossing the 30 MA, which is bullish, and the price point is above the 50 SMA. Now, another thing you do want to look at is that the momentum is currently positive, and that's definitely a bullish thing, followed by an MACD that is on the bullish side, the positive side. Now, the ADX is at 1180, which suggests a sloppy movement, and the willing percent R is closer to overbought than oversold. Now, I do want to explain a little bit in Fibonacci retracements, etc. But first off, stochastic fast and stochastic slow. What you're seeing here is that there might be actually another leg up for this one. And we'll be testing what seems to be a, a resistance or um, kind of a, a ceiling wall. And what you're seeing here is that on the, on the moving averages and the Bollinger Bands, so the Bollinger Bands first, you're expected to trade on the top at 304, and then the bottom 237. And on the moving averages, you're seeing a wall at 298, and the bottom is at 244. So this is a very critical time where it seems like it's almost dropping back, very similar to uh, historical movements, especially back on the 28th of April and 29th of April. But the current support on the Fibonacci retracement is at 261. Below there... 191 below there 80 cents the current resistances are 317 372 452 and 553 and if we were to go ahead with priceline actions we're seeing significant support levels at 288 below there 268 below there 250 and going to 230 and then down towards 208 190 and then down to 175 going to 131 and 101 significant resistances 303 going upwards to 345 going to 376 going to 403 jumping up to 450 486 and 553 comes to the question to ed what do you actually think about this one well ideonomics has really impressed a lot of people in the last few months now, currently, there's this trend line that is currently a little bit negative, but in a sense, still almost in a channel kind of kind of way. Um, and what I would say is it looks something similar to what you're seeing right on here, where you have a bottom sitting closer towards a support of 226 and a top that is a little bit closer towards that 347 mark. And it's kind of oscillating between these two lines. Now, that is itself a bit dangerous when it comes in towards the, ce the bottom, but if it comes in towards the ceiling and try to hit that 349, it can go back towards 5 bucks. But in a sense, from what you're seeing towards the financials, etc., I get to see that a company that is trying to go towards a very much of a profitable path, and it's very close to doing so. So I think in the next couple of years or so, Ideonomics will be profitable. And that alone will probably move the stock price a lot higher from where we're seeing it right now. Now, that is definitely a surprise for a lot of people who believe that this stock is nothing worth more than 20 or 70 cents. It's definitely trying to prove its value. Now, yes, granted, they did raise some shares, etc. But that was all thanks to the retail investors moving the stock price at, to raise shares at the minimal damage possible. Now, in the sense, I do think that this stock would probably would easily see five bucks again within the next two years. What do you think about the sticker? 
make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there, and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. Uh, we do post research and DDs, and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.